Welcome back guys to server part 2. In our previous tutorial, we did quite a lot of code about server. Now let's continue from where we left. So the next activity which our server is doing is listening to who is trying to connect, who is on the same port. So we will require a parameter number 1, socket, which is the file descriptor created after we have created our socket. And the second parameter we will give a number 5. Now what does 5 signify here? Recall if you can. If you can recall what it is, well I'm good. If you don't, well let me tell you. The 5 or anything you can write over there, any integer, that gives you the maximum limit of clients that can connect to the server at a time. So this is our listen function. Now let's take the size of the structure client ATTR in client so size of client ATTR okay so we are done over here then now is the time for accepting the connection and whenever the connection is accepted we get a new file descriptor we have named it as new sock FT and whatever activities we are going to perform here on will be with this socket file descriptor new sock ft so let's write our accept function first parameter is the file descriptor and now again we are typecasting it from sock addr underscore in to sock addr Okay, so now the connection has been accepted and we have got our new file descriptor. Now, if this function has failed, we need to check it whether this function is successful or failed. So if new sock FT is less than zero, then we will write our error function. The error message would obviously be error on error on accept now we write a while loop so you have rightfully guessed that now we are starting to write the code for communication between a client and server so we need to make this loop continuous until we say a word such as buy okay when we say buy it will come out of a loop so we'll write the code for terminating or coming out of the loop inside the loop so first let's write the b0 function and clear anything if we have in our buffer we are using a buffer to store our message and then send it over the network in form of a stream now we write our read function so here we are writing our read function so there must be a corresponding write function in the client code don't forget that so we give the parameters for our read function the first parameter is the file descriptor the new one as i told you then buffer so we will get something there uh, from the client and it will be stored in a buffer and then the size of our buffer which we have specified while declaring it now if read fails then it will written minus one and we will come up as always with our error function and tell the user error on reading i'm making a mess for the spelling error on reading okay i got it right then we will have a print f statement where we will write client percent s because we want to display a string backslash n leave a line and display 
buffer. So the client gives a message, it is stored in the buffer, and then we are printing it over the terminal over here on the server side. So you know what the client has actually sent. Now it's time for the server to reply. So we write again our P0 function, clear the buffer, 255. Okay, here also we need to do it 255. Clear our buffer. And then use the fgets function. The fgets function belongs to stdio.h library. The function reads bytes from stream. Here, the input stream, stdrn, into the array pointed to by buffer. It contains three parameters buffer, the size of it, and the stream, which is stdin. So now, fgets will take the reply from the server and then send it to the client. For this, we require the write function. The write function works quite similar to the read. The parameters are also same, new soc ft, buffer, and strlen, string length, which belongs to the string library of buffer. Okay, so now f gets take what the server want to say, and the write function post it over the network and the client with a corresponding read function is able to get whatever the server wants to say. Now again, like the upper part, if n is less than zero, we will come up with our error function, which says error on writing. Now we write the code to get out of this loop. We use the inbuilt function of strings, strncmp, which is string compare. Now when the server says pi, which will be stored in our buffer, so whenever the buffer gets the data by from the server which would be of length 3 obviously um, see over here we need to specify the string length also in this str and cmp so well whenever we write by we need to exit so let's write down if i equal equal 0 then break Okay, so whenever the server says pi, we will be breaking out of the loop and then we will close the new sock ft and then close our old file descriptor sock ft and then write the last line of our code written zero. So finally, the code for our socket is complete. Let's compile it and see whether it gives us any errors. Navigating to desktop, gcc, server.c, hyphen o, server. No errors, pretty cool, pretty good. So with this, we complete our server code in our next tutorial, we will be writing down our client code. It will be completed in one tutorial. I guarantee you that most of the parts are similar. So we need to copy paste some of the things and we will get through it pretty, pretty quickly. So this was it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Well, this I accept that this is a little difficult topic to understand, but do your best. Go through the video again if you want to. And I'm sure you will get over it. Computer networks and socket programming is not that easy to deal with. But with effort, obviously, everyone of you watching this video can do this. So, meet you in our next tutorial where we'll write down our client code. Goodbye, see you, JJ signing out.